Welcome into Real Kipper and Born. The Toronto Maple Leafs lose game 81 to the Florida Panthers, who in turn pass the Boston Bruins, and everyone's hair is on fire. We have a lot to discuss today. Um, welcome in, everyone. Today I'm joined by my boy, Sammy McKee. We got uh, Lance Kennedy and Jen Rolnick in the back helping us out. We're on Sports at 590, Sports at 360, and Sportsnet Plus, and you can get our podcast wherever you get your pods. This hour is brought to you by Bet365 because we're only one hour today. Sammy? And we wore our Hello. we wore our green for Bet365, the two we of us. We are matching green, and we are both wearing <laughs> well, gray pants. When, you, when it goes to, like, the shot of both of us, yeah. it looks a lot less. It looks like we're both wearing green, but then if you go back and forth, <laughs> it doesn't look as bad. Mine doesn't look as green when I'm zoomed in. So I truly think there's some sort of, like, yeah. vibe. We look outside, and it just feels it's like a crappy a day. day. Crappy day know. today. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. So A lot of people, I got messages today, like, is Sammy going to be okay? I had someone say this is going to be a counseling session for Sammy. Really? Give my love to Sammy. Really? Hugs. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I am, you know, are the Bruins, after watching what you watched last night, yeah. and specifically in the second period where the Florida Panthers turned up the playoff intensity to 150, and the Toronto Maple Leafs maybe didn't, just weren't able to get there, and we'll talk to hear some of the clips from Keefe. After watching that, I definitely don't feel quite as bad about playing the Boston Bruins as I would have playing against that Florida Panthers team. Like I do think that we all got a little excited about them having a little poopy stretch, and we're all like, "Oh, they suck now. They suck. <laughs> yeah. They're hurt." And myself included, I bought into that. Yeah. But when they turn it up the way they did last night. There's not a lot of hockey teams in the NHL that look yeah. as good as they do. So all of that is to say that I don't particularly love the option that is the Boston Bruins. <laughs> it's playoffs. You're playing a good team. Yeah, but here's the great thing about playing in the Atlantic Division, my friend Justin Bourne. <laughs> if you happen to beat the Boston Bruins in the first round, yeah. you're likely going to be playing that Florida Panthers team you played last night. So ah, they got a bunch of band-aids. They'll be hurt by that. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll see. But no, I... I I'm interested to dive into the conversation with you about the Bruins. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we can talk about the game last night. I think, I think we should. To me, this 70 thing is totally agonizing. And yesterday I wasn't as upset about it. And I thought, you know, he's going to get it. And it was kind of a moot conversation. And I hated the way it played out last night. In terms I, of looking for him or? I thought towards the end of the game, it was horrible. Yeah. I, I, I can't. And... You know, okay. We'll do. How about a Keith clip, uh, Lancey? We'll go to keep uh, to clip four on talking about having the top guys out in the final minute of that game yesterday. Yeah. We'll hear what the coach's thoughts were. I mean, it's that's less about Austin. It's more about the fact that we got a chance to work on our six on five and get some reps at that, and some six on four against a really good team. Um, I think you, you, know, you take advantage of those opportunities, uh, especially against a team like that that really challenges you. So, yeah, Austin plays a role in that, but that's for me, is more about getting us some reps in a very important part of the game here uh, with playoffs approaching. What would you like to see under your... I believe I don't. No. Well, I, I think you look at it as if we can also get Matthews one here, this takes a lot of decisions out of our hands and a lot of pressure, outward public pressure. I don't know. I just, I've soured on this. Mm -hmm. I want him to get 70 goals. I really do. Yeah. I think it's an incredible accomplishment. We listened to Paul Maurice talk about it yesterday and how it's a history and all of that. But it's turned into a total sideshow, Borny. Yeah. And last night was an absolute sideshow. And the fact that you have him out there in a game, he gets high sticked in the face. You know, he gets, a uh, draws a penalty. Mm -hmm. You're down 5-2. You have... $40 million worth your all your chances of a playoff series on the ice at the same time against the Florida Panthers team who we know what they're like. It's a meaningless game. It's turned into something that I wish it never did. Yeah. And he's going to probably play tonight. And I'm sure, I don't know who's starting in that. It looked like, you know, I, I we're, we're on early, so we don't have these details yet from, from Tampa. But I'm assuming it's going to be probably the backup. Maybe he gets it. But it's just, it feels way dirtier than I wanted it to feel. Yeah. And I, I'm just being honest. Yeah. I, you know, it didn't play out perfectly. You would have loved for him to score, you know, two against Detroit on Hockey Night in yes. Canada and, and call it a wash uh, instead of having to have these conversations, which we saw coming for a month. 
I've literally been talking about this since like early March. Yeah. So, you know, it's not perfect how it's playing out. I am curious to see if there's any chance he doesn't play tonight. It feels unlikely. You know, one of the things that I think gets lost in the conversation of should he prioritize this record or prioritize the team or whatever is that going for the record does not necessarily not prioritize the team. He can go out, play 15 minutes, score against Tampa, get a 70, and Mm -hmm. that helps him roll into the playoffs. It could be good for the team. Yep. So to me, it's a lot of like, we don't really know what's best for him. I, you know, would have loved to just have him watch tonight's game. It's not an option now. I think you leave it up to him. You can't have a sour Matthews. You can't keep him out if he wants to go for it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of up to him what he wants to do now. Yeah, I think he's playing tonight, right? I think, I mean, we can listen to Keith clip three there, Lance. If you want to play, it's on Matthews and the plan for tonight. So if you want to play uh, clip three there, Lancey. Lawson played well tonight. He had, he had a ton of chances. You know, I don't know how many shots he ended up with, but a couple are behind the goalie. Uh, you know, it's a lot of those have been falling for him. They didn't fall tonight, but you know, I liked I liked a lot about his game. Will he get play, play tomorrow? I'm sorry. Will Austin play tomorrow? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. We've got 12 healthy forwards. Oh, yeah, he's playing. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Luke Fox. Will he play tomorrow, direct as you can be? Yes, yeah. Luke Fox, the 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 man. <laughs> and and Keith, we have twelve healthy forwards. Answered his question for you know what that does too though is it does alleviate the pressure on Matthews to say he made this decision to chase mm-hmm. it. He's not. Who you can't put in Domi, you can't put in Yarn Croc, you can't put in McMahon. Mm-hmm. You're, you're a cap team. You can't call someone up. I you know from the start of the show till now. This is why I love the show. We don't do the show off air. Mm-hmm. We save it for. He's gonna play tonight. Yeah, he's in. So. And I don't even blame them. They don't really have much of a choice. So, so you know, I think last night was in terms of the meaningless game that you worry about injury in mm. and you worry about what's going to happen in. Last night to me is much more of a scary game than tonight is as I touch. I think this is, this is wood, That's right? That's wood there. It's, it's authentic. This feels like what I'm touching. That tonight is the, the one you worry less about in terms of intensity. Because mm. tonight... Neither is an team absolute has, yeah. no hitter. Yeah. You're not playing each other in the first round. Both team knows exactly where they're finished. You know who you're playing. Could play each other in the second round. For sure. And you want to take a, you know, take a chunk out of them. Yeah. But tonight feels like a night where it could be Matt Tompkins in net and you yeah. could be going up against rested like guys who are resting and yeah. so I, I do think 34 plays 15 minutes tonight. Yeah, and I think the ideal scenario is like we've talked about yesterday, gets it early. Put him and in bubble wrap. Put him in bubble wrap, play him 12 minutes the rest of the night, yeah. and away we go. Yeah. But like That's you said. That's how leaf stuff works out. <laughs> empty netter. <laughs> yeah, empty netter, fine. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so he'll be in. It didn't play out how you want. It's interesting just to to talk about last night's game a little bit. You know, you're in a group chat with Kip and I mm-hmm. during the games. Mm-hmm. Kip can be, at times, hard on the team, mm-hmm. which is fair. Yes. You know, like they're, you know, they like every other team. They have their shortcomings. Um, after the first period last night, he said, really liked how the Buds played last night. Or, or sorry, in that, in that mm-hmm. period. Really liked, it, liked how the uh, Buds played in the first. And it was it, they were great. That was a really good period of hockey. They, I think they shot them 14-6. They, uh, all my metrics, they were way better in chances yes. and everything. And when there was physicality, you know, outside of maybe a Tavares moment here or there, answered the bell. Went back at Florida and hung in there. Not sure what happened. I don't know what happened. It's almost like... Florida took a bit of a punch in the mouth and was like, oh, no. Oh, we're doing, like, we're trying? I I don't, I don't know what it was. It's really hard to picture because a lot of times you watch hockey, there's periods that have different feels to them mm-hmm. where, you know, one, one team will come out and they'll be like, we got to respond to whatever happened in the first yeah. period. That happens every night in the National Hockey League. Of course. I don't know if I've ever seen two more stark periods in that all year. Where the Leafs were get re- the puck in the second, they were really good in the first. And I was impressed with how they played, and I was like, "Wow, this is a really, this is a borderline statement period here." I'm like, "Is this how they're going to play for the rest of the game?" And then the penalties start, the power play start, the wave of red starts, that building gets going. You know, like they get to cheer because there's other fans there, so they get somebody to play off of, so they get up. So you know, there's there's some real yeah yeah yeah. The yeah, Leaf yeah. fans bring the right, atmosphere, right. which is great. Yeah. And it was a wave. And I just, I've never, I don't remember a period, well, I'm certainly not this season. I think the last, it's not uh, the most peri- uh, shots that the Leafs have given up in a period. 29 shots. Not the most. 
Really? Yeah. Uh, 32 shots on goal allowed March 15th, 1984 in the second frame versus the Whalers. Shout out Sportsnet yeah, stats for digging that one on up. That team. He might have. But I, I don't know what happened. Honestly, to me, they gave a good period, and then the Florida Panthers came out with their A game. And they weren't ready. I that's think, what it comes down to. I actually think that was a good of a playoff reminder because that's what happens in playoffs where the momentum, momentum is more real in playoffs than at any other time of the year where the other team gets their home building going and they start getting all four lines mm-hmm. and you're hemmed in. You can't get off the ice. Yep. Long change in the second. And uh, it can happen. You can lose a game mm-hmm. in five minutes. So to my earlier, uh, to my earlier point about what the Leafs will be facing tonight, I just saw on Twitter uh, from Ed Encina, who used to cover the Baltimore Orioles and now is the beat writer for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, it's okay. a very interesting Been pivot. following him for two totally different yes, purposes. Divisional I, I, opponent, no, either I, way. Yes, I followed him for <laughs> baseball and now it's hockey. Yeah. Um, Matt Tompkins will start tonight, looks like. All so. right. Good for him. Well, let's, let's find out what Sheldon had uh, his take on what happened last night in the second period. Clip one, Lancey. Well, obviously, you know, them scoring early in the second period on that first shift, that's... You know, the momentum shifts there, energy changes in the game, and then we just took too many penalties, you know, so it took away from what I thought was a pretty good hockey game for us. Their penalty kill got lots of life and momentum for them. No real scoring chances. I thought we managed it really well, but a lot of time in our end, a lot of time for our best people sitting on the bench and and a lot of defending. Um, you know, but it's a, it's a funny game. You know, we played a terrific first period and uh the game looks a lot worse than it is from there it's we didn't give up many scoring chances in this game here tonight way less than we've been given up in previous games despite what the shots say but uh obviously give up too many goals and don't get enough uh chances or don't finish our opportunities from there yeah. didn't look as bad wasn't that bad <laughs> 29 to 4 in the second this is a classic keith playbook Zag, right? the hard zag. zag, the hard zag. Expected everyone to be well, like no, that. There's, there's certain games where they're awful, and he's just smoking hot, and he yeah. comes out, and he just he doesn't even have the ability to look at a reporter and answer a question. He's Only so mad. Throwing fast, yeah. yeah. But this is the one where they look bad and they lose to a team where it's like, you know, it wasn't that bad. But this time of year, that's what coaches do, right? Yeah. It's like we're okay. We're actually better than you think. We're actually great. Did you? You know what you guys miss? We were great. So I appreciate uh, him trying to yeah. you know, not pile on his guys four days before playoffs. Um, but, yeah, like kind of left with more questions than answers. Mm-hmm. Joel Edmondson, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to start for you. But, you know, he's having some struggles on the back end. Morgan not Riley, finish. Yeah. And Morgan Riley, worst game I can remember him playing. It, he was dash four last <sighs> night. But the big one, mm-hmm. Joseph Wall gives up four. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't know if his save percentage probably ended up above 900 considering the amount of shots they gave up, but wasn't great. Wasn't great. Wasn't bad. Wasn't great. To me, you're worried to me. I just was desperate for him to just run out there and grab that and just have an excellent game Mm. just so you can have the the fallback option that makes you feel good heading into the playoffs. That makes fans feel good. That makes Keith feel good. That makes true living feel good. Makes Shanahan feel good. And that wasn't what it was. Swaymar or Swayman Allmark is. I thought looming. that I thought that he did actually make some good saves in the third period. Yep. And like the, the, the it was a wave in the second period. Like they just couldn't. The puck just kept going in the net. To quote yeah. Sheldon Keith, the puck just kept going in the net. But I thought he kind of rebounded a little bit in the third period. But four still go in. The same with Samsonov. Four seems to be going in. I, it's amazing. And this is just more of a fan, and I'm sure they feel like this, and the, they don't necessarily feel like this in the room. But all the goodwill that this Toronto Maple Leafs team had built up over, I don't know, when's that like stretch of hockey that they were one of the better teams in the league? The last month and a half. So they have been legitimately one of the better teams, record wise, stats wise, yeah, advanced like stats wise. They're 22 and six in their last you know, like, 28 Across games or the something. board, yeah. the numbers are looking pretty good. Yes. It is remarkable how crappy three hockey games can oh, make you feel about a team. I don't feel that way. Well, listen, I'm a fan, buddy. Yeah. I watch those three games, and I'm still like, I don't think they suck, <laughs> but I'm definitely shook a little bit. I do how f- can you not feel a little bit shook about what's happened in the last few games? I know they're meaningless. Uh, I know. No, but I'll tell you why. 
I'll tell you why, and okay. it's because I never felt good about the goaltending to begin with. Is okay. That's fair. So the goaltending looking shaky is not like, well, I hadn't anticipated this but it's little not wrinkle. Just all the goaltending. It's the decor. It feels like they can't get a puck out of their own zone. Yeah. Like it's just and it feels like there's a lack of intensity. And it could come down to what these games and how little they mean. And I I acknowledge all that. And when it starts on Saturday, they could play great and they could look great. That is a definite possibility. Yeah. But I would be lying to you and I would be lying to our beloved audience <laughs> if I didn't tell you my confidence has been shook or shooken, yeah. shaken, shaken. <laughs> it's be, be shook. It's be shook, Marty. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's, you know, there is a, uh, an old psych study. You know, I'm a, I'm a psychology major. Back oh, in the yeah, day. wow. And, you know, if I offer you. And now you're sitting here with me. Yes, I know. Great. Right? Vanilla and chocolate cone and you mm-hmm. get a choice. I ask you how much you, how you feel about your choice. You're, you're more likely to be happy than if I gave you nine choices. You pick one and you feel like you I'm missed out. I'm a bad out. example. I'll just go vanilla every time. <laughs> well, fair enough. <laughs> Even if I got nine choices. All right. Well, yeah. if you got 900 choices, <laughs> you might right, be okay. like, well, there's five types of vanilla. I could have had that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That rich French That's vanilla. That's how I feel about the Leafs decor mm. is that. Now you have 9D that are NHL D men. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that you're ever going to feel good about the six you choose. Yeah. Because Lilligren out doesn't feel good anymore. No. Nope. Because, you know, Edmondson is struggling. Labushkin mm-hmm. hasn't been awesome. You know, Benoit is kind of in. Brody is, you know, whatever it is, you have all these choices for mm-hmm. guys to put in. And it's really tough to sit here today and say, here's the best six. Yeah. You know, like the handedness doesn't work for the best six. So then you got a guy in Lilligren who hasn't been who hasn't played hockey. No, but he is definitely in. Is he? For me, he is. I if you're if you are choosing your decor and you stuck with him at the deadline and he's healthy and your right-handed shot options are Ilya Labushkin and Timothy Lilligren, he's in the lineup. Timothy Lilligren is playing. Well, I can game tell one. you that's not happening. Labushkin's going to be in for sure. You think? I do. No, I haven't I, liked him at all recently. It's Brody who you're saying. You have TJ Brody who plays 20 some minutes a night for you and all this experience. Yeah. Or you got Lilligren who's coming off injury, played a game. I mean, Bunkus and I just discussed this for a couple minutes, but you don't think that the decision could be come could come down to Labushkin or Brody for the I, last spot? Uh, well, if you're that sure on Lilligren, which I don't know how we would have got there. I listen, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm far from sure. Yeah. But I think like all the for all the reasons I laid out. You know, he's played, he's going to have played three games here now. You got him back. You stuck with him at the deadline. You talked about how you wanted to build him up and you wanted to build him up. He's starting game one. To me, he's in the lineup. Boy, that's the one he's least likely to start giving. You think game one's going to be a run around and bang it up sort of show. And the Bruins absolutely own him. He is awful against the Bruins. You think of those (laughs) games he's played against the Bruins, you know, the the stuff in the boards earlier in the year. I, I, I would love to know what his plus minus is against the Bruins. I could probably look that up, but yeah. it's not it's not great. Yeah. So, you know, whatever you think that lineup is going to look like, um, there there's some tough choices to be made on the back end. <laughs> I personally would play Joseph Wool tonight um, to just jump back to the goaltending because hmm. um, I didn't feel good about his game last night. He hasn't played much hockey. Mm-hmm. He's going to be the backup in playoffs. I don't think you can say that ba- a back-to-back is going to ruin a, a 24-year-old. You know, so I, I think the more chances he gets to play, the better. Yeah. So that's my vote for tonight is give him another one like Jones. is. If you're down to Jones, you're in at least game five of the series anyway, well, I mean, and you've lost at least three times. It could be Matt Murray instead of Jones, bud. No. <laughs> He's playing. <laughs> we'll send Jones down then. Jones is Jones is 908 with the Leafs this yeah, year. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. This is not something I decided I thought I was going to ask you. Series on a line, you have to start Martin Jones or Matt Murray. Who are you starting? It's Jones. I don't even hesitate. Okay. okay. Listen, I think Matt Murray's a good guy. Like, I, I <laughs> oh, here do. Here we go. Here we go. And yeah, no one ever preferences gonna, that. And I think he's the best goalie. He's going to get. That's all. <laughs> he's going to get three and a half mil this offseason morning. I, I haven't trusted him as a Maple Leaf. I yeah. know he's had great stretches of his career, but in blue uh, and white, it hasn't been great for me. So. Should we get down to the brass taxes here, the Boston Bruins? Yeah, I guess. So uh, our beloved Ryan Fabro, yeah. our fearless leader, came up to me when I was type- when I was printing out the lineups. He said, ah, the Bruins, the Bruins. It's like on paper. And I looked at him and I said, it ain't on here. The paper is soaked in blood. <laughs> 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 the paper on the paper that's written with the, with the Bruins lease matchup 
It's covered in the souls of Leaf fans' yep. past. It's it's unbelievable that all the time, Borny, we spent in here. I know. Talking we about never even took this seriously as an option. That talking about the Florida Panthers and how they're going to match up and what it's going to look like, and the Boston Bruins tank two games. To Chicago and Ottawa? No, they lost to... Ottawa and... No, Ottawa and Washington. Yeah. So last night... It almost, so I don't know if you saw what the, the shots by period were. Uh, yeah. They had three shots in the first period. And it almost to me, and then like, I, I didn't watch the game, but I got a few messages from Bruins fans who were like, oh, they were actually playing, they were actually playing. Yeah, because they knew it was too shameless. They knew if they had like three shots, of, they're like, we got to go out there and play hockey. We got to pretend to play hockey. So it's now the Bruins. They tank. I was right about it. They tanked well, for the hold Leafs. on. They lost. I don't know that you were right that they tanked. Well, they pretended not to, but okay. they did. Okay. They got their desired effect. Yeah. And here we go. It is uh, really a whiplash to now be talking about the Boston Bruins. Uh, yesterday on the show, we said, who would you rather have? Mm. And Kip chose Boston. I choose death. <laughs> I think I chose Boston <laughs> as well. You know, the... There is plenty of reason to believe, and we will get to the stats over the, the next two mm -hmm. days as we uh, preview the series, but the Bruins haven't been good. I, uh, Friedman will tell you I'm on record calling them frauds several times mm -hmm. this year. Good. I believe glad, the, I, glad the Bruins fans have that tape out I, there. I have. <laughs> there's plenty of it. Their goalies are very good. Very good. But this is not a team that I, that I think is loaded. I think the Leafs... This, this is going to be, mm. you can see a day in history when you're talking about the year it went right for the Leafs, the final few days of the season and how Boston fell to them, you know, mm. a team that was struggling. You're talking about the Leafs not looking good the last couple of days. I mean, mm -hmm. they just lost to Ottawa and Washington. On purpose. Yeah. On the other side. Well, yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah it, it or The good news is a lot of this team doesn't carry the scars that you do. Yeah, but... I really do feel like they, they know, and they know the fans know, and the players... Well, Boston's they, been good for 11, and, 12 years. Yeah, and they, the, it doesn't really well, matter to me. Years. It doesn't really matter to me about how the Leaf players feel. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like if you go back and look, the Leafs players have had fine success. I believe Marner, in the regular season at least, the Bruins are by far and away his number one most scored on. Oh, like yeah. he, he, he's had a lot of success against the Bruins. But it's not about the Leafs players. Those Bruins players want to play the Leafs. They love to no, play the Leafs. No, they don't. You're Are making you that up crazy? because you're afraid they of them. They love playing the Leafs. You think Danton Heinen has an opinion or Morgan the, Geeky or Jacob Lauko or Jesper Boquist or I, Jason Megna? These you are all I, real players in their 12. You and I both know that's not who I was talking about. You're doing that on purpose. You, Number 63. Okay. Number 88, David Pasternak. Number 74, Jake DeBrusque. Jake DeBrusque. Jake DeBrusque. You could have had Charlie him. McAvoy. And that was goaltending. That's all that really matters to me. And there's not enough Jake bodies DeBrusque left for this to absolute, matter, my friend. Jake DeBrusque is an absolute leaf killer. Scored multiple big goals against him in the, in the playoffs. He got uh, Nazem Kadri suspended because he hit Marlowe, hit old boy Marlowe. Yeah. Got Nazem listen, Kadri suspended. Listen to me. You do this whole thing to protect no, your emotions. Man. So you think? So you just think it's gonna be a Leafs win in this series? I do. Ah. But I don't think. I think they're fifty-one percent favorites. Okay. I, you know, I think they are, at least up front, they are considerably better. Their back end giving it to Boston, and their goaltending giving it to Boston. So oh. what's most important in playoffs? Well, but there's I don't this know. old saying that's that, a fantasy too. There's this old saying that forwards win championships. Is that how <laughs> the Bruins? The Bruins are middle of the NHL yeah. in terms of producing offense, yeah. which is great news yeah. for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mm -hmm. the, you know, Florida would have given them a much harder time, and Florida had much better defense core and better defensive forwards. You talked about Barkov yeah. being all over them. Mm -hmm. Are you worried about Pavel Zaka shutting down Austin Matthews? You know, like Charlie Coyle, okay. Mm -hmm. But these are not the elite of the elite. This gives the Leafs strength a better chance to thrive. Mm -hmm. Matthews, Marner, these guys will have more opportunity to be better. I think everything you're saying is incredibly accurate. And I think that the Leafs have a much better chance to beat the Boston Bruins than they would have had to beat the Florida Panthers. Specifically after what I watched last night, I was like, oh yeah, they're still the best team in the league. Yep. So everything you've said is right. And the Boston Bruins are definitely a better option yeah. But <laughs> it could have just like 
not be the gold and black team, that to me, it's like that is the biggest yeah. mental block for every Leaf fan that's listening to this right now. And every, like people convince themselves, but at the end of the day, you have no history in your mind of good memories versus this kind of version of the Boston Bruins. No. With Pasternak, no, he kills the Leafs. Marshawn. You have that video of him running around saying how people are going to get it this year, and every Bruin fan brags about that for some reason, even though he turtled twice in that game. <laughs> it's just there's too much history for a lot of Leaf fans to be positive about this. No, the, there's two things for me that are popping in my mind. One is that when the Leafs played the Bruins, so the Leafs' strategy in playoffs has mm. always been that our elite forwards will power us through. Yes. That has always been the plan. Yes. And when they played the Bruins in playoffs, it was what, 2018, 19, and 1920? Mm -hmm. Or maybe even they sooner? Played, they played, the last time they played them was 18, 19. 17, 18, 18, 19. Yeah, back it's to back. 20, 2024 right now. The I'm saying the young guys on this team are now prime age horses. Austin mm -hmm. Matthews has won a Heart Trophy. He's mm -hmm. won Rockets. He's mm -hmm. a different guy. Scored 69 goals one season. One season. Yeah. I've heard that. It's yeah. a very good number. Not quite yeah. 70, but it's good. It's quite a nice number. The <laughs> well done. Thank the you. so the core the plan for those guys to mm -hmm. to win mm -hmm. has a better chance to succeed given where they're out of their career. The other thing is this: mm -hmm. the Washington Capitals had to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins to get to their ultimate destiny. They lost to them for years. <laughs> Do you not feel like you need to pull, like King, was it Arthur, who, who pulled the Excalibur from the rock? I was going to say Lear, but that's definitely, yeah, not, definitely right. not the answer. <laughs> you know, do you not feel like the dragon needs to be slayed here for the Leafs? <laughs> this could be the first step to the ultimate destiny. Yeah, I couldn't care less about that stuff. I, th I think... You believe in all this fiction about jerseys and ghosts, yes. but you don't believe in slaying the dragon well, for no, the championship? I I can't. I think there's something to what you're saying, but the Leafs could be the the Devils, the Jackets, and the Sens, and they go to the final. I don't care who they beat. Yeah. But having said that, if the Leafs beat the Boston Bruins in the first round of the playoffs, as a, and it springboards them yeah. towards winning a Stanley Cup, yes, that cup would be <laughs> much sweeter because you could look yeah. back at this time when they finally beat the Bruins, sure. But any cup, I don't care who they beat. Hey, I don't care. Like, I, that's to me, think, that's secondary. But it would be nice. I think you'll look, if they're able to get past Boston, mm -hmm. I think you can look back at the years of struggle mm -hmm. as progression, where you say, we couldn't get past the Bruins. Mm -hmm. We did. We couldn't get past the Lightning. We did. Couldn't you may get have past to, the Panthers. Well, we that'll didn't. be your next opportunity, <laughs> is you're going to have to do some work. So, okay. I don't want to come off as like super negative because I feel like I am coming off as super negative and nervous. I hear fear. I do fear. <laughs> I, I sure you can, you can I fear <laughs> like I have fear yeah. I do but at the same time I do think that they can beat them I really do and I think that they haven't been good for the second half of the season you think they won't but you think they can I'm not picking them to beat them no yeah. I'm really not I if you gun to my head asking what's gonna happen the least are gonna lose game seven at TD Garden why would you the think it, are so but no, but it's like, it's going to be a super tight series. <laughs> yeah. I think it'll probably go six or seven Yeah, and they have home ice advantage. Yeah. So Buddy, if they lose game seven in TD, I'm just going to come to your side. I don't think I'm, I'll do the show. I'm that just going to believe in ghosts. I will have to do the show that. Cause that's literally the show that everybody's been looking forward to watching me do. Like yeah. I've gotten to the point where I'm enough, enough of a synonymous of the elite fan just that people enjoy tears. my pain. Yeah. So although a lot of people want to watch that, but yeah. I do. If I had to pick right now, I would say the Boston Bruins are going to win in seven games. All right. Well, we're going to talk more about this. <laughs> Sorry, Lee. More Trish. about last night. <laughs> we're going to do a little game time all after the break. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Real Kipper and Born. On this day, seven years ago, Tyler Bozak's overtime oh. goal gave the Leafs a 2-1 series lead over the Washington Capitals. It was the first one since Travis Green in 03. Caps ended up winning that series. Yep. Thanks to Lance Hornby for that step. One of my favorite playoff goals, Bozak from Nazem Kadri on the power play, off the half boards, shot tip into the middle. Classic Babcock yeah. plan. Off the half boards, hard snapper into the JVR middle. JVR down low, helping on that power play. Bang, right. Yeah. The, uh, great, great goal. That was when I truly, truly loved that team. You know, like it was a, the first year they made Before the playoffs. Before the scars set Before in. Before the scars set in, you're like, oh my God, he's going to win four cops. Buddy, Kapanen looked like he was yeah. going to be a big part of this. So, and uh, shout out Jim Houston, who was on the call for that. And I remember him 
the inflection in his voice when he said the Leafs have the series lead mm -hmm. with like the passion plus like the sort of shock yeah. because it's like they were the Caps were heavily favored. Yeah. They, they hadn't won their cup yet. Was that the year they was won that the, the cup? Year they won the cup? No, maybe it wasn't. That, it was 16, 17. Yeah. Anyways, they won in 18. the yeah. way that he like called that was just elite. Yeah. They have the lead. Like it was just <laughs> yeah. so good. So I, uh, that's what I truly loved. <laughs> You're so bitter. Kid. I know. I'm just beat down, man. I've been beaten down. All right. So I don't need to get too more into that. But uh, you want to do some game time? I do. Actually, before we do game time, I want to read this headline. Okay. This was uh, forwarded to me by uh, a friend of mine. Uh, maybe this is the year the least beat Boston. Says delusional idiot who doesn't know S. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's from the Beaverton. So good stuff it's, there. Yeah, it's, the, the, the fruit is low hanging, but they picked I, oh, it very well. It's very, very good. Yeah. So I just wanted to read that to our beloved fans. All right, it's game time. Presented by Bet Three Six Five. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet Three Six Five. Must be nineteen plus, Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Now, we have some series uh, confirmed, and uh, Colorado Avalanche and the Winnipeg Jets. They are the the only Western Conference uh, series that is confirmed. Yep. Jets get what a season for the Jets to me. Yeah. For them to get home ice advantage in the playoffs. Uh, you know, they didn't win the division, but the Dallas are a runaway train. They're really good. And I don't think anyone had this kind of expectation of the Jets this year. I think people thought they'd be good, but yeah. to be this good, it's an awesome season. And huge to get it at home. So you're not in altitude 100%. as much. You're in your own building. And they have a good home ice advantage there. They go nuts. They get they wear all the white. Although haven't they lost a bunch with the with the, the white? I'm Anyways. Very interesting number to me on the series. This is just to win the series. This isn't game one or anything. The Colorado Avalanche are minus 130 favorites to win hmm. that series. Plus 110 for the Winnipeg Jets. To me, not to, you know, discredit our wonderful sponsor, Bet365. Disrespecting the Jets yeah. to me. I, I don't know how the Jets aren't a favorite going into that series. Hellebuck v. Gorgiev with yes. home ice advantage. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know that they have McKinnon. I know they have... I know they have, is Ranton playing again? Is he back? Like, you know, he was banged up with the concussion. Uh, to me, that's, it should be minus 110 both ways. Mm -hmm. Like, that is an even money type of series to me. And if I'm, that's uh, bets are made. If, I'm, see, a, if yeah. I'm a gambling man, yeah. which I tend to be from time to time, yeah. mostly around golf majors and NFL playoffs, but sometimes in hockey, plus 110 is a good number. Yeah. So, uh, would you like to hazard a guess? at what the line is in the Toronto Maple Leafs Boston Bruins playoff series. First off, I just want to say that I'm going to bet the the Jets yep. in that series. I uh, as well. I like them. Um the Leafs against the Bruins, the Bruins are favorites. They're uh, exact same line -130 Boston plus 110 Leafs. Plus 105 Toronto Maple Leafs, minus 125 Boston Bruins. Okay. So literal so, underdogs. Yeah, they get to be underdogs. Show this tape uh, Sheldon, I know you're listening. Get the bet three six five thing. Put it on the the, the big board mm -hmm. and show them all that they are underdogs. You know, for years now, the Leafs have been favored to win their series. They've had home ice the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. You've heard the opposing coaches, John Cooper, leaning on it. Paul Maurice leaned on it too. But mm -hmm. like, oh, we're just happy to be here against the Leafs. Oh, oh the Leafs! God, like, yeah. If anyone has a chance to take a period off this, uh, you mm -hmm. know, just really setting the stage. The pressure's on them to get it done. You can't do that this year. This year, uh, Leafs are dogs. And, hey, their record on the road in playoffs under Sheldon Keith, pretty damn good. Yeah. So Enough to bet plus 105 to beat the Bruins? Yes. I. Uh, it's a tough spot. I prefer the Leafs as favorites for the, my happiness hedges. Oh, yeah. So it's a tough one to have, have to them bet be on under. Boston here. We'll see what, when we, the when happiness the hedge, get up. <laughs> you know, when the season starts, happiness hedge season starts is around game four of every playoff series. Yeah. I don't do it in the first couple games or whatever, but once the, that's when it starts to come in. I, it's going to be interesting to have a different coach. You know, you know, you're expecting Paul Maurice for Kippers Clippers coming yeah. in here. Now it's Jim Montgomery. So we'll see how that goes. Does he say anything? I don't know. We're going to find out. Oh, boy, uh, so. Just going through these series quickly, the lightning and Florida Panthers. What would you hazard a guess at the line is on that? I'm going to say pretty similar to the, the line you just gave me. Minus 125 Florida. They believe in the Florida Panthers. They're minus 170. The wow. Tampa Bay Lightning are plus 145. Oh, that's must bet. That's a really good that's number. That's must bet. I I've at one point said that I think the Tampa Bay Lightning are the best team in the East. Yeah. 
I no longer think that. No? I, I do think that this is very similar to when we were talking yesterday about Vancouver and Nashville. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, I'm not comparing Tampa Bay to Nashville. I'm just comparing the situation. Yeah. That I think a lot of people, a sexy pick will be Tampa. Tampa and I feel like Florida might run them over. Yeah. I, I really do feel like there's a possibility of that I happening. I think it comes down to is Vasilevsky the guy he's been yeah. or the guy That's who struggled this season? 100% what it comes down to. Yeah. And the last two I'll bring up quickly before we, before we get out of, uh, of game time. The New York Islanders are plus 275. Uh, probably would stay away from that one. And the Washington Capitals are plus 350. Uh, minus 450 if you want to bet on the New York Rangers to beat the Caps. You know what I like to do is a lot of these series bets. So series bets are one of the the few places I feel like consistently I mm-hmm. do pretty well at and and season long stuff. It's easier to sort of get the things tend to even out to what you what, yeah. where they should be. I think that Washington one if you were going to bet it you could probably bet them in five to lose in five say so, Rangers in five or something. So the I'm just looking at the correct score after yeah. game 4 yeah. line. And so if you want Rangers uh, 3-1. Yeah. Is, Three, yeah. Oh, sorry. I got the wrong number here. So if you want to bet on them to sweep, it's plus 400. Three ones plus 140. So I'm looking at the correct series handicap here as I pull it up. Uh, I'm not going to go through this right now. Okay, but cool. Good that was game time. <laughs> uh, presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary. Bet365 must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Yeah, just got intimidating there with all these numbers. I'm yeah. like, let's just land the plane here. Zach Galifianakis. What the hell happened last night in the NHL? What a unbelievable stretch of 10 minutes there. So to lay it out, Washington and Philly are tied. Mm-hmm. Detroit is losing to Montreal 4-3 to three mm-hmm. at the time. And I, I want to say Detroit scores to make it 4-4 with three seconds 3. left. 3.3 seconds. David Perron from the point. Philly then thinks they have to beat Washington in regulation, so they pull the goalie, not knowing Detroit has scored. Yeah, because Detroit getting the point eliminated them anyway, right? Right. So, so they wouldn't have done, they wouldn't have pulled the goalie had they known they were eliminated. Yeah. So then they pull the goalie, not knowing they're already eliminated. Washington hits the empty netter, mm-hmm. which then knocks out Pittsburgh. Crazy. So <laughs> if you're a Penguins fan watching that unfold, it was like an 18 car pile up like everything was going along okay detroit's losing yeah this game you know like it, it was all good and then it just drastically wasn't can you imagine being a fly on the wall watching Sidney crosby watch those games it'd be the saddest thing of all time i would like i, to wonder, be, I bet you he didn't even react you know who i would like to watch watch those games kyle davis i'll be a fly on the wall for that room for sure i bet you some poor water bottle needs <laughs> some repairs this yeah morning. yeah there's a dent in the wall somewhere yeah, yeah i i think we made a lot of fun of this playoff race, and rightfully so, because there were some crappy games for a long time to get to this point. Yeah. But what we got, Borny, was very good. It's an exciting... Like, towards the end here, yeah. this was like, you know, I, I don't know how much of a soccer fan you are, but uh, this is a much smaller scale in the final spot for a playoff. And they f- all play at the same time. Yeah, but yeah. it was like, in the the one year that Man City won their first one in 50 years or whatever... It was the goals were going back and forth and the fans think they win it and all. It's like having these different moments yeah. in different games that have so much impact. And all. Like, mm. did you see Kane's reaction to sh- winning the shootout? He scored the shootout goal. Beautiful low blocker yeah. snapper. And he just like hangs his head. Yeah. It's like, oh, great, was we over. won. Like, that's so depressing. Yeah. Like, I, I just, I thought it was really, really good. Yeah, it was, it was an exciting night of hockey. It's been an exciting run. We're obviously left with some awesome playoff series um yeah could not be more excited islanders find their way in the end uh looks like vegas is going to end up with the oilers right Mm -hmm. now they're a point ahead of the los angeles kings after a win last night um la could catch them la has a game against the blackhawks to go a point ahead but Mm -hmm. uh vegas still plays anaheim Mm -hmm. so vegas beats anaheim the oilers will get the vegas golden knights and then their the treat for falling out would be playing the dallas stars Right. It's a big, yeah. I mean, you either get the Oilers or the Stars. It's a tough matchup regardless. But for it's a big difference for the Oilers because the Kings are not the Golden Knights. But so. then, but no, but then Nashville, they could go around to, like, they, there's still a little bit to be determined here. But yeah, I, I think you would be doing all you possibly can do mm-hmm. to avoid playing the Dallas Stars. I think of all the teams I've watched in the last little while, 
I've been probably most impressed with them yeah. in terms of being one of the best teams in the league. Like Florida's right there. But, you know, I, I respect all the franchises and I hope they're all great. But for our bosses and for us and for all of Canada, I'm really hoping it's not Dallas and Florida in the final. Yeah. Because that really <laughs> feels yeah. possible. Yeah. And they're both awesome teams. They're both have a, like a lot of exciting players. Yeah. But the laundry on that one doesn't necessarily fit my eye a whole lot. No, there's the potential for the best Canadian year in a long time, right? Yep. Like if you're looking at Vancouver, Nashville, I'm picking Vancouver. I just told you I'm picking Winnipeg over Demko Colorado. gets back last night. They get a win. He looks good. That's huge for them. How yeah. nice is that for the psyche heading into the playoffs? They get right. a big win. That's great. Like I'm probably, pick, I'm definitely picking Edmonton over LA and maybe over Vegas. Mm. And I told you, I, I think Toronto can get Boston. So call me a big old Canadian homer here. But it, at the very least, they're not, massive dogs in, in any of these series as far as I see it. I want you to just go down, head to fantasy camp with me. Can you imagine okay. that the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Edmonton Oilers met in the Stanley Cup final? What the, that the, would do the for this country. Would be on fire. I, I like I mean you talk about, you know, our bosses being happy. <laughs> Ad <laughs> price is going up, baby. <laughs> yeah. But like I I can't imagine because I think I'm trying to think back to the finals. It's been weird because of COVID. Yeah. But like the last final that had two true like blue blood sort of teams, you know, you had Colorado and, and Tampa, which are two great franchises, but they're not, it's not Chicago and yeah. or whatever. It's just having it be two teams like that. I, I can't imagine what that would do. You know, last year, you know, you guys did Leafs talk, mm -hmm. um, you know, at times 10,000 people watch, whatever. When Toronto beat Florida, or sorry, beat Tampa in game yeah. six, and mm -hmm. I was on with you mm -hmm. guys. Uh, over 80,000 people listen, so, you know, eight times your yeah. usual volume. If you go to a third round, you win two playoff rounds, mm -hmm. now you're a month into playoffs, you have time for it to build and people to get on board. I just can't imagine what the city would feel like. It'd be really good. So I want to make sure if you're listening to this that you will be returning to Leafs Talk. Yes. So we're doing Leafs talk again after every playoff game, of course. Yeah. And Justin Bourne will be the, the third head and a three-headed monster. I will be the third wheel. We need you during playoffs <laughs> because uh, we need a babysitter. <laughs> well, I do. Yeah. Uh, Bunkus is more professional than I am. But, you know, the, I'm in these positions because of my passion. And yeah. I, one minute after a super intense playoff game, you put me on air, you're probably going to get some passion. So yeah. uh, I'm really looking forward to having you back. It's going to be great. So yeah, that's, I just want to make sure we got that in there. Uh, interesting news at a mini, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Andre Fleury resigns for a year. Yeah. I, you know, I guess like a guy just loves it. Doesn't he? He seems to, some of these guys that are hall of famers, I feel like they're just racking up the numbers at the end, just making it harder for other, anyone to ever catch their wins and That's all that. So yeah, good for him. He signed for 2.5 million. And what was his numbers like this year? I'm just looking it up. Uh, I don't have them in front of me. They, I he was a he played thirty nine games this year. He was a two ninety eight and a eight ninety five. So, I mean, they yeah, it's probably just back up, kind of having yeah. people must love him there. And but he's had an amazing career. And you're right, like he is a first ballot Hall of Famer. He is. He's in the top five, I think, in wins ever. Or is he even no, even one three? Up two, he's, he's up there. He's up there. So, anyways, um, the so the big surprise last night when Washington gets that. OT winner, mm. or sorry, the empty net winner, is the Capitals get in as maybe the worst goal differential team in the last... Mark andre Fleury is second all-time in wins. Second all-time yeah. in wins. There you go. So, you know, one of the worst goal differential teams to ever make yes. the playoffs, if not the worst goal differential team to ever make the playoffs. If you sort the NHL by goal differential, mm -hmm. the, the caps are minus 37. Uh -huh. The teams behind them are Montreal, Columbus, Anaheim, Chicago, San Jose. So f they're better than five teams in the NHL. So if you sort the list of like the, the plus minus and where they are and see the X beside their name, like as yep. a team that has clinched, it's hilarious. Like this is a, if you're the Rangers, they're you're getting served a series on a platter here. You are very smart. Mm. How, how does that happen? Charlie Lindgren was very, very good, but I guess you get blown out when you're bad, yeah. and then you sneak out one goal wins when you when you get it done. There it is. But also, you, you've complained about the you know what's true 500 and not. I yeah. don't have the standings in front of me, but there's surely they're not a actual or a, a true 500 team. Here we go. They are 40, 31, and 11, meaning they're 40 and 42 yeah. on the season. So there you go. You know they're not an exceptional hockey team. So tonight. 
Leafs play the Tampa Bay Lightning oh. final game of the series. We have a quick clip on what Sheldon Keith is looking for tonight on the way out the door. If we get clip five, please. Whoop. Got anyone there to play clip five for yeah. us? <laughs> no. Uh, right. So I'd just like to see us play. I thought we played a good game here today in lots of ways, especially that first period. You want to start like that again? Um, there's a lot of things we'll we'll take out of that first period. Um, and, you know, you want our special teams to be good, which they were again here tonight. Um, uh, so that's a positive for us. Power play gets us going. Penalty kill has, you know, has, is really overworked tonight, but does a good job. Those are the kind of things you, you'd like to see uh, continue. And then, you know, we want to get out of the game healthy, which looks like we did here tonight. So um, to that end, it's a successful night. But uh, obviously, we wish we got the two points tonight. He's in full cliche mode. Yeah, he is already protected. Hope, hope we the got team. the two points tonight. It's, yeah. Uh, I saw a tweet from Jason Greger, mm -hmm. who we had on the show the other day, which we had on more. It was great. Mm -hmm. That, do you know what, you know how I always whine about the, the playoff standings? Mm -hmm. If the, was the 1-8, exact same matchups. For in the East? In the East. Wow. It would be the exact same matchups. There's no, there isn't one that would be different. Although... We're if at 1-8. I believe Boston different. was incentivized. Had they won that, I think they would have got the Islanders. I remember reading last so, night. So, I mean, that part of it, you clearly... Change the incentives. Change the incentives. I get that part of it. But if you're starting the playoffs right now with the exact same playoffs as if it was 1-8, so... And I looking at it, I can't think of a team who deserves a different fate. Like, Washington deserves to play yeah. the Rangers, the, the Bruins and Leafs. Neither of them pulled away from the pack. Mm -hmm. I can't believe the Bruins, you know, after the start they had limping in here at the 109 points but so you've really i will say over this hour morning this is bad that you've made me feel a little better okay that you the way you've talked and the way the confidence that you have yeah and that this should be a good series for the leafs has made me feel a little bit better when uh you know david patronak shoot one's under, shoots one under the bar five minutes into saturday night and I, da, 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 i won't feel <laughs> their, good their power play is a little scary yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, what does it always come down to? I don't know, goaltending? Special teams, and it's going to come down to it again. It feels like it comes down to whatever is bad for the Leafs. That's like how people like to do it. It's no, like... special teams has been one of the most important things for the Leafs and one of the things that's killed them, and it's going to be huge again this year. It absolutely is. It's the playoffs, special teams yeah. matters, and you wish that their penalty kill looked a little bit better. Starting to figure that out a little bit. Mitch Marner looking like himself after his mm -hmm. injury, which I think is really encouraging. Yep. You're hoping you get Max Domi back. You're yep. hoping, you know, hoping all those guys are available. But Domi back and Yarncroc Yarn back, that's, uh, I'm actually writing with the Leafs' perfect lineup today. Really? On sportsnet.ca, their, their playoff lineup and what it could look like. And certainly... Care to preview? Uh, the preview is that I don't know what to do <laughs> in terms of... Game Wait, one, I feel different. This for you. No, I feel different in game one than the rest of the series because you got to have Ryan Reeves in game one. I thought Ryan Reeves had a little bit of jump last night. Yeah, he's skating way better than he did in the first part of the season. Yeah, he needed some time off. I don't know what he did during that time off, but he worked, maybe he was working with Barb. She was still working with the Leafs, Barb Underhill, working with her. But man, so. he was no, nope. I mean, he was flying around. I thought last night, he even carried the puck a couple times. I was like, what's gotten into this guy? But you need him in game one, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So no I question. think he'll be in game one tonight. Leafs versus the Tampa Bay Lightning, a game that doesn't mean much aside from just <sighs> tightening up all the Man. loose screws. Can we get the side show over with? Get the 70th goal so we can never. Austin Matthews, 69 goals, one game left, going to play about 15 minutes tonight. We have our fingers crossed get for them. For shift, fingers please. crossed for you. Um, and then we will be back tomorrow at our usual time. Nick Caprios will be here, 4 o'clock. Thanks for listening today, and uh, enjoy the final game of the regular season.